We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is Monday. It is the first day of the Democratic National Convention. And uh, I was feeling a little salty today. So I thought I'd try to find somebody who's even saltier. And that would be Will. Will's coming in hot again. It, it, I feel like a salt bath. Um, sometimes <laughs> it's been it's been another um, unbelievable week, although I, I've been to Chicago in the summer. It's going to be a party. That's yeah. a great place to have a convention. It is. Uh, I mean, it's a beautiful city. Um, if, you, if you've been to Chicago, you probably have. You, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's a great city to be in. Um, it is. It's absolutely and, a wonderful city. And, and I'll guarantee DN, the DNC is going to be a lot more fun than what we saw coming out of Milwaukee um, this week. So I'm looking forward to seeing part of it. You, you, know, what I I, you know what I get tired of hearing, though, because the media mm-hmm. will do this. Go, yeah, you know, the last time they had a Democratic National Convention in Chicago, 1968, it turned into a, a big mess. Like that has any bearing on today. We're in a different world, different people, different issues. It's, yeah. Shut well, up. Well, the about difference, that. The, the, what they forget in 68 is that there was no nominee. Right. Uh, it was a fight on the floor. And the craziness with the anti the anti war protesters on the outside, but inside, it was a, a knockdown, literal drag on fight. Right. I mean, I remember watching videos of people punching each other on the floor, and Humphrey better, uh, barely won. Right. Now we're coming into the DNC this time with candidates we're done there this is more of a celebration and how yeah. we're going to uh, how we're going to uh literally prosecute the, the campaign coming through coming and it's good forward. it's good it's going to be a party they aren't going to be fighting amongst themselves they're going to be like you say planning on how they're going to go against the republicans and the thing is this is a perfect thing to perpetuate this quote unquote honeymoon period. I don't think it's a honeymoon period. I think this is going to keep rolling through November and this will just add fuel to the fire. I think we're passing a honeymoon honeymoon period to newlywed status. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're getting that point. Um, and also, I mean, and the mass media keeps trying to like, I don't know who the morning person is on CNN, but I was, I heard someone saying that she was saying that she heard that Joe Biden doesn't like Kamala Harris. Um, they're, they're still, I mean, Trump's still saying, I mean, his last, again, he's harping on the hundred million dollars he spent <laughs> fighting there, Biden. And, and now it, they did a coup on Biden and he, they gave him the the worst day on Monday, whatever. It was just like, they're trying, they really are trying because the mass media did what they wanted to do. Right. They got rid of Joe Biden. What they didn't get was 1968 Democratic Convention. No, which is what they wanted. What they They wanted wanted that desperately. And they didn't get it. And all of a sudden everything switched. And the other thing, too, I mean, what you saw, and we just talked about a moment ago, um, Harris's economic speech. That was an economic speech, people. That's how you do it. No box of Cheerios. And I'm sorry when he says I'm going to go back and have some fun with the Cheerios that I, I didn't even want to, and that just put me off for days. That made um, me never want to eat Cheerios again. Oh, it's just, Oh, the images that being said. Um, so the reaction to the D to her, um, her, her economic plan has been pretty much what I thought. The mass media is basically saying we need more, uh, Washington post had their whole editorial board saying that we, it's a gimmick. They literally say, find the editorial, you guys, if you can find it. They literally said that inflation is not called by, caused by high prices or price gouging. Well, what causes it? I, I don't know. It's some other thing they said that she has to address. It's all gimmicks. They need, <laughs> quote, unquote, they want a precise plan. Meanwhile, they don't bring a sh- All they keep talking about, about Trump, he's got to be on policy. He's got to stop attacking. He's got to talk about policy. Okay, the same question I have for everybody else who said answers the same way. What fucking policy? Well, exactly. He has none. Well, he he, he, has... he, he did talk about policy today in his or, or on, on Saturday on his speech. Um, and it's always the same shit. First of all, you know, he says that Kamala wants to raise taxes and I'm going to bring down taxes just like I already did, which he didn't do. Um, 
And he always goes to the tariff thing. This guy is so dumb, he doesn't understand how tariffs works. For those people that don't know how tariffs work, he thinks he can put a 10% tariff on China or whoever, and they got to pay that extra 10%. Unfortunately, what happens is they tack on a 10% on their price to you, so we mm -hmm. pay the tariff. Inflation yeah. goes up, and we pay, mm -hmm. the, pay the tariff. How he and, thinks that's a, a tax plan, I don't know. Vice President Harris made a good comment. He called, she called it at the Trump tax in her speech, which I thought was clever. It is a tax. Um, it, it is, there's no cohesive plan from him other than what he did before and didn't benefit anyone but the very rich. And as she said at the end of her speech, look who's working for whom. They're, he's working for the rich. They're working for the middle class. It's simple as that. You know, the tariff concept is 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 pretty much stereotypical Republican. I'm going to tell you I'm going to give you something. Then I'm going to pull it out of your ass. And then I'm going to tell you I'm still giving you something. And you're going to believe it. That's exactly what tariffs are. There's the other thing that he always says, too. Um, and I, I just want to clarify this for folks. I think I did it with Eric on the show. But he, his only other policy in terms of economics is drill, baby, drill. We're already producing more oil than we ever have in the history of America. And he wants to drill more oil because that's all he knows. And you know what the interesting thing is about that? You know how when, when Kamala came out and said, uh, I'm not going to tax tips, and Donald Trump said, he stole my uh, he stole my uh, uh, idea, idea. And, mm -hmm. which he stole from Bernie Sanders, which he stole from Rand Paul, or not Rand Paul, um, his dad. Um, but but the point is 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 when he says drill baby drill, you're you 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 know history pretty well. Do you know where the mm -hmm. origins of that phrase came from? Drill baby drill. Oh God. And who said it first? Was it not the sixties seventies? I'm trying to think. No 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 no, no no it was more recent than that. It um, was. It was Sarah Palin. That's right. That's right. Because she wanted to do the Alaska wilderness. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. Um, so if you're another steal, great vice president pick. If you, yeah. Yeah. If you're going to steal something from somebody, how about not a dipshit failed VP candidate? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just it, the insanity of the man. The, the, there is what frustrates me about this entire procedure right now. It's like, People don't know how economics kind of work. They think. No, they don't. I made a, I made um, I made a TikTok on on about his economic plans and everything, um, about Harris's plans, and and I, and I was telling people, I made a comment to someone because these people have been brainwashed by economics. Yeah. You've been brainwashed for forty five fucking years for economics. It was a bullshit because all that happened in Reagan's years is the collapse of manufacturing. Why? Because under Reaganomics and Reagan administration, they let manufacturing go overseas. The collapse of middle class, the collapse of the social net system, giving taxes breaks to the rich. It didn't work. It was a smokescreen. It was bullshit. <laughs> it collapsed the middle class. The middle class hasn't come back until recently. Unions collapsed under Reagan because he made a uh, constant effort to crack unions. All we have to do is the uh, air traffic controllers union. That right. was the beginning. We the, And every time I talked about it, people keep bringing up the Reagan and then liberals did this and they raised taxes. No, history does not show that. And the reason history has been really simple. Republicans take an economy, fuck it up. Democrats get the economy, fix it, get it rolling. Republicans get it again and fuck it up. Well, Those are, but that's a blunt history of the last forty years of economics. In this and country. manufacturing hasn't come back until Biden. Biden, Biden and then what Biden's Biden, responsible for it. And what did Biden do? <laughs> Biden went to the one thing that, and why the Chinese fucking hate him. The Chips Act took Chinese leverage off us. Right. We're getting jobs because we're doing manufacturing back at home. By 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 creating those chips, the, the Chinese have no fucking leverage on us anymore. Right, and that's a big deal. Um, and it's a, it's, and what I'm, I keep listening to these people. And the worst thing about 
economics with with um, talking with Megan Fu- M- MAGA fucks, it's all the same. Yeah, it's because they're idiots. You know, either they they say something about it, it comes in again. Well, you know, you look well fed. Someone goes, this is what you look like under a Harris administration. And go, you mean well fed? I'm good. That's great. But the one thing that that fucking pisses me off because they keep bringing this, and this has been the Republican game plan since Nixon. I get, I get this. Well, you're just a welfare bum. And the reason you said that, because of my color of my skin. Yeah. Okay. So let me make this clear. Reagan started his um, his presidential campaign in a sundown town in Mississippi. Remember the Willie Horton. Remember the welfare moms under Reagan. Remember all that bullshit. That was all predicated that that welfare is used by people of color. And that's not and true. I know it's not true. And I don't give, and again, I know the majority who do it, but the majority who, who are uh, who are on welfare vote Republican, which I never fucking understood because yeah. I never get it. As one guy had caught on a quick TikTok thing, he goes, Republicans always made you, uh, you're, he goes, Republicans always promise you to be, uh, we're going to make you rich and you're still poor. Why do you keep yeah. voting Republican? And that's the thing. The one thing I don't care about the personal thing. I know what it is because you guys are your children, your little kids. And I and I brought and I expounded to that guy. And then one motherfucker comes in. So what do you do for a living? Prove that you have a job. I said, fuck you. I'll, I do what I do because I do have a job and I do own a home and I do and I work for my shit. That's what I did in my life. But for you to question that tells me one tells me that again. Because you look at my face, you think that I'm spouting this because I want a free ride from the government. Now, let me tell you a quick story years ago. Can I just I say worked... one thing? Can I Go just ahead. say one thing as a contrast? Mm-hmm. They say that to you. They say you're on, on welfare because of the color of your skin. You know what they say to me? What? They say you're, you're just some rich, white, entitled liberal guy. Well, I'm not rich. Yeah. I'm doing fine. Yeah. But, but, but see, that, that t- t- tells you. You're yeah. brown, so you're on welfare. I'm white, so I must be rich and entitled. And the thing about it, there the stereotypes are on both sides. I mean, yeah. there is that. Uh, we we get that. But the frustrating thing about it is like I don't you can't get through these people. No. I don't I mean you go you right can't. to the race, you go right to the economics. And the one thing I um I, I always remember is that when I after the 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 Great Recession and we had to move to Georgia because my father had a home we had to live in because I didn't lost my job and all that. I was trying to find a job and I could sell. That was my job. I could sell. So I got a job at a, as a, at a Ford dealership here in Georgia. Right. And I sold cars. I was pretty damn good. I'm, I am a good salesman. I am not an unethical salesman. Sorry, guys, what you see with Trump, I know that's that's sales. I hear that bullshit every day, but I'm not I do my job to make sure everyone's comfortable when I sell something. Right. But I always remember because it was Georgia, there was this fucking redneck they had as a manager. This guy was the epitome of a redneck. And he kept fucking hounding me, kept bugging me. And there was one time he told me because, you know, do I have an issue with my knees? Yes, I worked. Um, I worked twenty years on concrete. It bothers you. It's worse now, but I was still doing my job. This motherfucker told me that if I was you, I would get on disability and social and disability and welfare and leave because that's what you should do. And I looked at him, and he goes, "So you should leave the dealership right now." And then I turned. I walked away from him and sold a car. Fifteen minutes later. Yeah. By the way, he got fired next month. Perfect. Karma is a bitch. But yeah. the point is, that's what you fucking hear all the fucking time from these people who think they get one over here, who think this is the way the social net works. The right. social net does not work like that. The social net should just be able to lift you up. Or as Tim Wall said, you know, a hand up once in a while which I respect because that's where it should be. Um, 
So that's the one thing I hate about having any kind of economic idea. All the things that Kamala Harris laid down, is she going to get most of it? Probably not. She'll probably get 60 to 40, 60 to 70 percent of it, right. even with a full blue Congress, because right. that's the way con- that's the way government works. And if I see one more fucking Tic Tac, Tic Tac, now, God, Trump's got me talking about Tic Tacs, Tic Tac yeah. um, about. So Kamala Harris has all these plans. Why is she has she done anything yet? First, dumbasses. She's the vice president. The president sensed that. And two, you still have Congress to have to do that. To all those people out there who will listen to this, if they do it all, learn how fucking government works. Yeah. That's basics. Well, you know, they they say that about Kamala. She's the vice president. She's not in control. Biden is. Biden got a lot of shit done. Why is it that Donald Trump, when he was president and had power, wasn't able to accomplish the things he he wanted? Like infrastructure. Yeah. He got nothing. He was too lazy. Yeah, it's, it's, and also, he doesn't. He he's the greatest thing now. And God, God bless the man. Joe Biden is a beautiful politician. And in his younger days, he could turn a phrase. And it was yeah. But it had gotten. And the hardest thing right now uh, is to do. We're all doing Monday morning quarterbacking from mm-hmm. uh, from the switch, and I'm doing it a little bit, and listening to the speeches. Like Tim Walls today in in Nebraska, let's let's stop for a second. They set up a rally speech for Tim Walls in the red state of Nebraska, and that place was fucking packed, and there were people waiting in hours to see him. That's balls. And two, well, he's a hometown boy, that. though. He's a hometown boy. He's from Nebraska. But the point is, is that he shouldn't do that. Yeah. In a red state like that. And and his message was was point on. And I swear to God, as a hype man, this guy is He's good. You guys got a winner. I feel bad for you when he becomes vice president, although you tell me the, the lieutenant governor is a good uh, She's gonna be good well. too, yeah. But I've never I've never Joe was a policy guy. He could not do what Kamala's doing. He could not do what Tim Walsh is doing because no. Kamala is kind of the policy person. She's the prosecutor. She's going to this one to Tim Walsh is the um, is the basically she's the head coach. Right. He's the assistant coach. Right. The assistant coach takes what the head coach plans is and then puts it in his own words. Right. I mean, it's almost if you think about it, you hear him. I'm hearing I'm hearing. OK, this is the plan. Great. Great coach, I got it. Let me go. And then he goes out and gives it to his people and right. gets them in, incited about it and gets you. This is the program we're going to roll with. Well, I it think gets, that, I think that's the important thing you got to remember. Somebody like Joe Biden is an old school politician, mm-hmm. the policy guy that worked in the '60s, '70s, maybe even mm-hmm. the '80s. But in this day and age, you got to be an entertainer too. You got to suck them in. You've got to attract them and then feed them the information. And fortunately, Walls and Kamala can do that. And Brian Cohen, um, Brian Tyler Cohen made a good point. He goes, he gives respects to the to the Republicans because what they did, they were able to take like con- something complicated. He going, he goes back to the Obama, uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act. Right. And so, in the biggest problem with Obama was that, that instead of going out there and hitting little pieces, giving us, you know, saying this is, you know health insurance for all, something catchy that people can act, like, latch on to. Right. They talk about policy. Right. The Republicans came up with death panels. I remember that. Yeah. And, and then that led to the Tea Party. That led to the Republican Congress. That left us where we're at right now. That's the, but right now, what did the Republicans have old, tired bullshit? What uh, Harris has done and Wallace has come up nobody's that's not your damn business uh, when we fight we win we're not going back these are all little things that everyone can put on a shirt like and he said it we'll have to admit it make america great was easy for these guys <laughs> it's easy for them um so what the, the tables turn and i watched pundits struggle with this they keep saying that the republicans need to be on brand and even on what what brand? What yeah. policy? You have nothing to present to the 
American people. And it's like, to use a, a biblical sense, it's like um, God lifted the scales off Paul's eyes and we can see now what we're looking at. It's like, oh my God, because it's so refreshing to go from old men speak and insane speak. God, no, forgive me, Joe, but old men speak to insane speak right. to a coherent speech and then someone who could also rally or to um which Kamala Harris does with uh, with enthusiasm and Tim Walsh who I who literally I'm thinking that if I I would run through a wall for him if he was my coach because he has that same thing it's so refreshing to hear that right. that's the the speech in Omaha damn yeah he was Just good damn well, you, and, you know and, and, the, the interesting and, thing is is that that we've got the Republicans, they're on the run now. And everything that comes out of their mouth has a negative slant to it. Everything that oh, comes God, out yes. of Kamala and Tim, uh, Tim Walls is positive. And exactly. people are very tired of the last eight years of negativity, chaos, darkness, and all this stuff. They're just starving for the light of day and, and something fun and something entertaining and something positive. Right. Unfortunately, Tim Walls and, and Kamala have grasped that and run with it. And it Let's go back to like her economic plan is that the mass media is looking for a negative. They want yeah. to put a negative. So explain to me what is wrong with her trying to control price gouging. Can it work? No. And yeah, don't give me that. They're going to set prices and, and bread's going to be a hundred dollars. Go fuck yourself. It doesn't work like that. Idiots. Um, but she's done that in the state of California. Right. She is. She's fought the, these type of things in the state of California. You do it legally, um, not necessarily legally. Yeah, I mean, fun, and that's what she's saying. She's not trying to to restrict a car, corporate's profit. We get it, but when your when your profit is in is really insane, and we can see it, and you're not lowering prices because uh, and your excuse is inflation. We know we're being had. People know we're being had. Well, and the big issue is stupid. the big issue is when they break the law. I mean, mm -hmm. up to this point, they've just been allowed to do whatever the hell they want. So that right. might be more regulations. That might be anti-monopoly type things or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there are some things she can do. What I find strange is when somebody like the Washington Post comes out and talks shit about what Kamala said. Kamala said everything everybody wanted to hear. And that's Bingo. her job right now. Um, mm -hmm. But how can you speak badly or ill of Kamala Harris that I'm that – Am I expected to believe that you believe tariffs and drill baby drill is the answer? Because I mean, you're not that, saying and, anything about that. No, they're not. And that's the thing, because they're looking for the negative. I mean, her addressing um, corporate landlords, which I in Georgia, I mean, they, the, the, um, the Atlanta um, Journal Constitution has a whole freaking series of reports on that. I've seen them on the news. They buy freaking neighborhoods. And they're sitting empty because people can't get into them. Right. It's, I mean, they're taking the market and controlling it. And she's saying we have to address it. She, and she, she said, it, not all of them do it, but we're going to make sure that there's not some bad players in it. And that's the thing. It's a positive message toward us all. We're looking to fix this problem. We're not going to fix it today, but give us what we need. We will fix it. And, and we will do our best to fix it. And that's right. the thing. There's a there's a competency that we need, and I think that's what's driving this. Going back to we said honeymoon period. No, people are are really getting married to this because right. we can hear it and see it. That's why the Democrats have changed. Demographics are changing now. I did have a thought that once you laid out the economic plans, um, and they were and the Brian Cohen was talking to Tim Miller at the Bulwark. He made a comment. He goes, as a Republican, I can't support some of it. So I want to ask all you know the Republicans for, for Harris. She laid out the economic plan. A lot of you are going to hate what she said. Are you still on board? Because yeah. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I don't trust Republicans. No. I especially don't trust Republicans who, who worked in the Trump administration because you fucking should have pulled a plug on him years ago, but you were pussies about it. Yep. Fuck you. I'm sorry. I mean, the enemy of my enemy is fine. But after that, get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. I'm being honest. Um, we'll, we'll defeat the monster. And once the monster is fine, 
go find somewhere else because I know what you're going to do. Because I know, because uh, I want you uh, disarmed and out of my house. Well, the, well, the thing is, you, you, you point, you pointed out that, you know, some people may or may not like what Kamala Harris said. Maybe 40, 50, 60 percent is what she could reasonably get if she's lucky. Um, these people who are voting for Kamala and then hear some economic stuff that they don't like. I'd love to hear why they don't like it. Why is price? Why would why would you prefer price gouging to not price gouging? Why would you prefer to have health care for people as opposed to not health care? I'd love to hear the, the 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 ideology about that. But but the fact is 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 that your choice isn't between your favorite economic thing. Your choice is between democracy and fascism. That's the choice you have to make. Exactly. We can worry about the other shit after the fascism is dead. But if you exactly. go for the fascism, you're never going to get that choice. Yeah. And 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 she had she came up with a plan, which I think was it's a solid beginning. It's building on what uh, Biden's already done. It's nothing surprising there. And to listen to the mass media act like all of a sudden she's come over there. It's come on. People have been dealing with this for four years already. This is stuff that the president has already talked about before. Um, and the problem we're running into right now, like you're just picking back on what you said, there are a lot of one issue voters still on there. I was watching Michael Cohen today with uh, Mike uh, Malcolm Nass, who is a um, known um, security advisor, and smart guy, mm -hmm. um, talking about the DNC. It may have an issues with Michael Cohen said he's getting a lot of. Uh, Jewish friends of him that won't vote for Kamala Harris because they're saying Kamala is not for Israel because she supports a ceasefire. So they'd rather vote for Trump and he doesn't get it. And then you got the Palestinians. And man, if you do an FYP page, you see those people going absolutely insane, going after black creators, saying that, well, mm -hmm. you, you, since you're supporting, you should support us. If you're not, you don't support us, you're not. It was, it's really pathetic. And they're all one issue people because they don't realize that like you just said there's a simple choice democracy, fascism, choose. And if you think Donald Trump is going to help, and the thing about like Cohen said, you don't get it. If he wins, you're going with the rest of us. They're picking us all up. Yeah. You don't get it. Yeah. And that's the one thing that um, there, you know, there was one professor in um who said a video threatening kamala harris threatening that she's going to get a, a great surprise in chicago and then she sent out a report saying the fbi just knocked on my door you think you yeah, think you, you don't, that's you the don't vice that president shit. of the united states you're not doing that shit no but the no. point is is this one issue because i don't i'm really flabbergasted by the amount of support I'm seeing in even the red states, a lot of blue dots are popping up in red states. Uh, will it make it? Will it transfer in electoral votes? Maybe in swing states? I don't know. Um, it's trending that way. I'm um, um, being hopeful because I because that's people are like going, oh, you mean I I really don't have to vote Republican? I can back away. Yeah, yeah. you can. You well, don't have to stay people, there. People are legitimately looking at and talking about states like Florida, Ohio, uh, actually flipping, maybe even Texas. Now, I'll, uh, Texas, I'll believe when I see it. Florida, I can see how that's a possibility, given that the whole, Florida is in a horrible state right now because of, uh, because of uh, Ron DeSantis and the abortion uh, ban. Uh, but since that abortion question is on the ticket mm -hmm. and because marijuana is on the ticket, uh, it's going to bring out a lot of liberal folks that maybe wouldn't have come out. It's exactly. also going to bring out some Republicans who are against banning abortion. Well, I, so I, I think saw, Florida oh, could flip. I saw um, <laughs> popped up on, on my YouTube feed. There was um, the local station in Miami, and it said newest poll for Miami-Dade. Harris leads by four points. Yeah. If she takes Miami-Dade, it's over. I'm yeah. sorry, it's over. Because Miami-Dade... Um, which is mostly Cubans have pushed toward toward Trump and all that because they have this weird ass fascination with fascism. And I've always said that yeah. as a Latino, but if that's a true fact and that holds, they're they're fucked. Florida is going to flip, and there's nothing they can do about it because Miami Dade is a key. If that's true, 
Well, that's she, amazing. If she wins Wisconsin, <laughs> excuse me, Wisconsin, <laughs> Michigan, and Pennsylvania, that may be all she needs. But if she gets Florida or Ohio or Texas, <laughs> there's no way for Donald Trump to win. I mean, if she gets North Carolina, yeah. whatever happens here where I live in Georgia becomes inconsequential. Yeah. You can scream all about it and fight it all the time, but the electoral votes won't matter in the end. What do you think? What do you, what do you think about since you're living in Georgia? Yeah. Uh, as as you're listening to this podcast, I will be in Georgia. I'll be in Savannah because I'm leaving Sunday when we're recording this on Saturday. Um, all this noise about you know them trying to game the system and trying to disenfranchise people. How serious is that what's going on in Georgia right now, do you feel? I think it's a concern. I don't think it's the – because there was a report that came out recently that one of those three um, board uh, board members on the state board was caught online talking to a Trump, a, a Trump uh, campaign advisor saying that, yeah, I'll do it as long as I become the Southern District – uh, director of the EPA jokes on him. The EPA right. is going to be removed. Right. So, do I think someone's going to try something? Of course, because there because the lie has has perp- has basically percolated so so much. And honestly, it's still Georgia and a lot of these older guys. The idea of Kamala Harris winning that state will will make their heads explode. Right. Will they get away with it? If Georgia turns the way I think it is, I do not think it's going to be close. I really don't. There, the there is. I, I don't think it's going to be eleven thousand votes. I think it's going to be a win for Kamala Harris so big that they may challenge it. But in the end, even if they try to challenge it, the court is going. No, the numbers won't let us do this. Um, so it's a concern mostly, but mostly to keep an eye out on your registration because they do have that rule that someone can drop you off the rolls if they challenge it. As long as everyone keeps their idea on eye in the rolls for us in Georgia, we're going to do our thing. I mean, they have, I believe, eight field offices here in Georgia, Harris does, which if you think you're not going to make a difference in a state, you don't put money into a state, which they did. You know how many field houses Trump has? Field offices has one in Valdosta, South and, and, Georgia. And when they put it in, they had a fight out front because they couldn't get yeah. along with each other. And, and the weird thing about it, you have in Valdosta, that's the southern end of Georgia. Well, you know Georgia. That's the yeah. southern end of Georgia. It's right at the border. You don't have an office in Atlanta, or where I live in Newton County, or or or, or Cobb County, or you know, or Fulton County. Definitely you not Savannah. In, yeah, that's about so, as blue as you. Savannah's can get. blue. I live in a I live in a blue county, which I looked up my congressman. This guy's been a Democratic congressman for three terms. Yeah, it's a blue county, and the thing about it, what what they don't realize is, Georgia has grown, and people have come into Georgia, and that's why Marjorie Taylor Greene had that whole idea about you have to wait before you can vote, because we're coming out where people are coming into Georgia and going. Oh no, and they and they're and they're living around where I live, around right. Atlanta. That's where the industry is. That's where everything's being built. And here's the here's here's the biggest sign. You need to look this up. Someone look this up. There's a TikTok of a, of a printer guy in Rome, fucking Georgia. He put up and he does blueprints. So he printed out a Kamala, Kamala Harris for president sign, and it got defaced. I saw that. Yeah. Okay. The best story about that is that the guy said because he had they had a MAGA came in and and he yelled at his daughter and scaled his daughter, and he said, "F you!" Not only did he put up another sign, he put up a fucking banner, and people in Rome, Georgia, Rome, Georgia, is center in Marjorie Taylor Green district, right? And they signed the fucking poster. He had to put up a second one, so. Will it make a difference? No, but it tells you something that is, is percolating in here that Republicans have no fucking idea or they know, but they don't want to say anything because they know they're screwed. Well, I know in Savannah, uh, people are looking at that growing pretty quickly, too. 
they're, they're looking at it as kind of like an Austin, Texas, a real beautiful mm -hmm. place to go. People want to go there. They're putting in a Hyundai plant. They're hiring 9,000 people or something like they that. Dredged, it's, they it's dredged crazy. the port. Yeah. They dredged the port. Once they dredged the port, I knew that it's all going to roll up in there because yeah. you're going to have, you're going to start bringing in more. It's going to be cheaper to bring stuff um, into Savannah and then ship across country on train than right. going to Long Beach or LA because that gets kind of gets kind of touchy. Right. But yeah, I knew that they, as soon as they cleared that dredge in Savannah, I knew that place is going to is going to jump. And the thing about it, they're not going to have enough labor. People are going to go there from some other places. So you're still going to have the Valdosta, the, the you know the Southern Cal. There, I mean, we there's some Trump signs where I live, but the thing about it is, I'm um. We don't, I don't have a hair sign. A lot of people who are Democrats don't have that. Yeah. It's not because we're afraid. We just don't, we're not, that's the one thing about, we don't wear the shirts, the caps no. and all that. We're, we're not that way. Now, I think this cycle people are just basically because they just want to tell MAGA, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Um, some people, one person built a red hat um, with Harris for president. He says, red's my favorite cover. I'm tired of these motherfuckers taking my color from me. Um, so that's what I keep hearing. And that's where you get the tone deaf from the media. Right. The media is fucking tone deaf. They are not hearing it. They keep going with, with the same negative shit. Well, you have to understand what they're again. doing. They're doing what bookies do. They're handicapping. They're trying to balance it. So it's a big fight. They, they don't want a landslide in November. Because that, that doesn't sell as well for them on TV. They're trying well, yeah, to no, handicap this stuff. And I get tired of it, you know, because they only care about the bottom line and money. And and we, 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 we've got our country at risk. We've got democracy hanging by a thread. And all they give a fuck about is money. I, I think... I think you're going to, after this is all done and all the attention for all the shit's going on, I think the media, the mainstream media is going to take a fucking huge hit as oh, far yeah. as audience. And they're going to be coming to YouTube or, or other places where there are people that don't want to just tell the oh, truth. Yes. It's happening now. I mean, I mean, again, a lot of people will say it, it might as touch as 3 million. Yeah. It's close to 3 million followers. Brian Tana Cohen, I remember when he started out, he's become pretty much a, a big slug well, because all we do it's not that we're trying to sugarcoat it i mean i'm i'm pretty sure if harris or someone did something that was atrocious we're going to lay it out we're not going to hide it i mean we're not insane we're not going to defend a man disparaging congressional medal of honors recipients no. we are not going to do it and every, i don't even have to go in the story everyone knows it and have you heard one motherfucking Republican condemn him for it. Right. J.D. Vance made fucking excuses for it, and he's a fucking vet. Yeah. he. That's the most despicable thing. When a vet disparages another vet, that's almost unacceptable. That's but, just but ridiculous. that was like, I mean, that was, I wasn't shocked because it, it, it tracks for Trump. Right. But I kept thinking, it's, I'm not, no, I'm not a vet. I've never been in the military. But I've seen enough history to see what the two things that always stick in my mind, maybe they're fictional, but it's true, maybe because it's based on truth. The Pacific is a great series on HBO that shows the uh, World War II Marines in the Pacific. Right. The first two, three, four episodes, three, two, three episodes is about John Bassalon. I did not know about John Bassalon. I found out about John Bassalon. Uh, Guadalcanal Congressional Medal of Honor. Tell winner. us, I don't, I, I don't know about him. Uh, John Bassalon? Yeah. John Bassalon um, was a Marine sergeant on Guadalcanal, won the Congressional Medal of Honor um, for single handedly picking up a machine gun in the middle of the night when the Japanese were uh, flushing him, burning his hand and stopping the, literally at the, uh, standing on his own, on his own, um, just grabbing a, a, a machine gun. Machine guns at those times were water cooled. You mm -hmm. couldn't touch them. The barrels were hot. He grabbed this thing, burned his hand, and literally stopped the the advance of the, the Japanese at night. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the unit till they could um, 
coming right until the Navy could come back. The problem with Guadalcanal is that they landed Marines on it, but they didn't, the Japanese Navy was that and forced the American Navy out there. Marines were stuck yeah. until they could get back and get the Navy off them. And Barcelon was one of the main sergeants that saved them. Um, he got a Congressional Medal of Honor. He died later at Iwo Jima um, fighting, doing the same thing, getting his men up the hill. Um, he got a silver star for it. It's an amazing thing to watch. I think it, I thought of that because I was, I was just amazed to think you're a man, you, you're a person, you're a human being, and you're scared to fucking death. But all that mattered was to save your people, to stand up, yeah. to do what's right. And the other th thing I thought of, the movie Midway. That is mm -hmm. a great movie, Midway. There's a scene where the two two fighter bombers, and I'm uh, again, history buff, I know about Midway. Two uh, pilots got separated from their um, air cover. They were fighter bombers. Now, American fighter bombers were not very good. In order to drop a bomb, you literally have to fly straight down on the target until you're literally a hundred feet off the water, come up and then drop the bomb on them by taking flak, getting shot at. It was basically your suicidal brunt. Right. They found the they found the uh, Japanese fleet, and instead of going back and telling them, they attacked the Japanese fleet. They attacked one of the carriers. And they succeeded in damaging the carrier so bad that made a difference in the in 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 the battle. And I remember this only because these guys were maybe 18, 20, 21 at the time, and they didn't even think about their personal safety. They just said, I have a mission, I'm gonna complete this mission and do it for everyone. That's what Donald Trump fucking disparaged. Well, well, yeah, he night. called those people suckers and losers. A president and, and of the United States, a commander in chief actually said that. That's And a if you're a vet and you support Trump, as one, there was a, a tech guy, a Vietnam vet, who was so upset, he was in tears. And he said, if you, he called it a DS-22, and I looked it up, that's your discharge. Right. DS-22, because if you have a DS-22 and you support Trump, I never want to see your face. Hope, be hopeful. I never see you. No. Because, because the point was, I just could not. I can't fathom military members or vets supporting Trump because he doesn't give a fuck about you. Well, he doesn't he care doesn't about give anybody. He doesn't a fuck about anyone but himself, right. but specifically in military. And it breaks my heart in the sense that he's, he's cheapened one of the greatest things that America has had. All right, you could talk about, you know, should we have done the war, not the war? You know, should we have been there? That's okay. You know, those political issues. Right. But the men on the ground, the men on the ground from Bella Wood to Fallujah were there because they were told to be there and they carried out their duties and right. some didn't come home. And for you to take that away from them or which Project 2025 um, is already in there to end veterans' benefits on a large scale. What does that tell you about us as a country? Because one person said this, and I don't remember who it was, said, you can judge a society how they treat their children and their old soldiers. Right. And it's it sickens me to see that we've gotten this way. I don't, we have to, we have to fix this, and the way to fix this is to get rid of them, to get rid of this fucking disease. Well, the thing, the thing about it is if you're going to be a good president, you have to have one trait. You have to be selfless. You have to be able to give and, and sacrifice for the good of the people. Now, the fact of the matter is Donald Trump is not selfless. He's selfish, and he's transactional. He doesn't do anything unless he personally gets something out of it. That's why there wasn't an infrastructure deal. There was nothing in it for him, so he didn't push it. Joe Biden, on the other hand, knew it was good for the country, so he made sure it happened. And we're stuck. And the thing about it is like, what still bugs me uh, to this day, I know the polls are trending, but they're still close. Yeah. And, I, and, 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 and I don't understand what, pe what are people 
is it a, is it a is it a toxicity that you need? Do you need this fix? Are are you guys basically Trump addicts that we can't get you to go to? We, we're trying to do an intervention. And it doesn't work. Um, well, I know well, it's a cult, but. Yeah, you know, I, I've I've never really held a lot of weight in the polls. Even now that they're more positive for Kamala, I, I I don't see them. I don't trust them at all. I think everything we see uh, tells me it's going to be a a decisive, if not a landslide, win for the Democrats in general. And I guess we have to wait till November to see it. But I don't think the polls the polls give us trends, and the polls are controlled by the media. They tell us what. They want it to tell us. I don't trust polls completely. I don't no. think it's that close. There's just yeah, too much I mean, shit going on. Yeah, someone said that there's a lot of unreported. And there was, and the other said too, there was not a lot of unreported for Biden too. Yeah. And people have switched. Um, it's, we're sitting here now three, what, a month now removed from um, Joe Biden is stepping back yeah. and Len Kama Ford. And it's going to be it's going to be sad that we won't be able you and I will not be able to see what history writes because I wonder what they're going to look at Joe Biden because Joe Biden I want to stop him because he was a I love Joe Biden just basically don't give a fuck anymore there's no, no more fucks to give right. the press he's talking shit to the press he's talking shit um you know on the podium and said Donald whatever he doesn't give a fuck anymore right. and it's almost it's so He's like, oh, yeah, I could just do this. It's cool. Um, I understand that feeling because when I retired, I was being forced out, but I just retired. I said, fuck it. I retire right now, right today. Give me the paperwork. And when I walked out of there, I thought to myself, I got nobody can tell me what the fuck to do. I can say whatever I want, and I'm a talking motherfucker. So yeah, I, w I, I understand that attitude. I, t I tell you what, uh, uh, Will, we're going to take a quick break. And oh. then we'll be right back. We got plenty to talk about. We'll be right back. Yes, sir. We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Will is with us today. It is Monday. It is the start of the Democratic National Convention. And yeah. um, as as we were talking about, Will, this is just going to be a big celebration. It should be a fun time. Should be a good time to promote as opposed to argue and yeah. debate. Uh, but then we've got an alleged debate coming up on September 10th with Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Now, of course, Donald Trump tries to sneak in one before that at Fox News, but Kamala's not biting because that was never a deal cut. Um, mm. What do you think about Donald going to this debate? I feel like he's kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. He knows he's going to get destroyed, but he's losing, so he needs the debate. He's He's got a... I, I just keep thinking of <laughs> I'm just I'm basically with with Trump in this debate, it's kind of like whenever you whenever you in uh, farm hand done farm thing, whenever you re leave an animal to slaughter, you just kind of lay some uh, bait in front of them, get them to the point, and then it's over because I can't see him coming out of this in one piece. Well, it's impossible. And if he, I, I'm more inclined. I'm on a 60, 40 in, inclination that he's going to get COVID or get sick by the yeah. 10th. September. Well, you know, the thing is we've seen two press conferences, a couple of rallies, and even when he's on his own and has total control of the, the event, he still can't stay on target. He can't still, he, he still says stupid things to make himself look ridiculous. Now, Kamala, they they are going to be hard pressed to find anything that's wrong with her because she will be sharp, she will be calm, but she will be attacking. You're not going to be able to say, "Oh, she was sleepy" or "He ran over the top of her." He will not be able to run over the top of, of Kamala Harris. And but see, everyone say he's on target. What's the target? Yeah, he has no targets. Again, I keep hearing the media and his campaign say he has to be on policy. He has to be target. He's he never spoken policy. No, no one. Everyone is in a cognitive dissonance. Dissonance. His speeches in 2016 are the same we're seeing now. Right. It's just a little more insane. He's never, ever talked about policy, ever. He just the only policy he's had tax cuts to the rich, 
And I don't know what happened in 2016 other than it was just a bad storm for we he caught some luck with his opponent who was already hated i'm sorry uh, i'm sorry guys hillary clinton was not well liked even in democratic circles um she couldn't stand up to him honestly when she was at a debate she couldn't score points on him he pretty much dominated her in the debates i remember that Right, And then her campaign was, they thought that his idiocies would would end him and they wouldn't have to worry about it. So they backed off on campaigning, right. kind of like what Trump is doing now. Right. Uh, but I think that's money more than anything. Um, and so where we're at right now is that um, Biden came through. We needed to get away from Trump. He won because... I mean, he just won because he won because uh, that that race was it was won because Donald Trump was hated and feared. That's why he. It, that's why Joe won that race. But and, and but, his, but his, go ahead, thing, well, the thing about it is, is that that uh, that people want to compare 2016 to 2024, but you can't because it's two different parallel universes. They didn't like Hillary. They didn't know anything about Donald Trump, and he was fucking entertaining. And the general public is a little dumb. They just want to be entertained. They weren't taking anything seriously. But now that's all changed. Yes. It, you know, it, it, what's that phrase that mom and dad used to say? It's all fun and games until somebody's eye get puts out. Gets yeah, put exactly. Out. You put and, an eye out. And somebody's got an eye put out now that we've seen all the damage he's done. So and it's a much different world. And if you think about it, everyone says Hillary was right. Yeah, she was. She was. Everything she said was going to happen. But the problem was when she said it and it sounded so, oh, God, no, they would never get a Roe v. Wade. No, Trump would never do that. No, God, no one would do that because the system wouldn't work. Well, guess what, motherfuckers? He did it. And he well, did it. And well, here we are now. You're a salesman. I've been a salesman in the past. Mm -hmm. I can come and sit down and tell you every possible uh, statistic about a car mm -hmm. that should sell you. And if I tell you it in dry terms, you might go, oh, okay, maybe. But if I say, dude, you're going to look good in this car. Exactly. This has got this, this. It's how you present it. And Hillary didn't do a good job presenting no. it. Joe Biden wasn't doing a good job this time around to present it. So we needed a better presenter. And we the got presenter. that in Kamala. Yeah. And the thing about it, too, is like the difference between 2016 and 2024 2020 is an aber I'm going to say an aberration because with COVID and everything, everyone was kind of like in a shock system and we're going to yeah. move on from him. Um, if it wasn't for the whole, you know, January 6th and everything, it would, it would have been like a, uh, a, just a moving normal moving on. Yeah. Um, but now people, again, the media for a while this year, for the last year and a half, since Trump announced he was running for president to save his ass from jail has been using that and pumping it. And then the biggest problem, again, uh, Joe Biden is old that we, people couldn't get around it. It was so loud. We couldn't yeah. see him. Now that that's been just, just taken away. It's like a curtains up. And then we see this and then we all start to see, the, the biggest thing I'm hearing right now in, in my, what I'm hearing from everyone around me, and maybe I'm not in a cocoon, I try not to, but you can't go on the right because this is bullshit. But people are not listening to the mass media. The mass media mm -hmm. are coming up with this, they're coming up with that. We need to talk to Kamala, we need a, um, an interview. I like when one lady said, no, she don't have to give you shit because we know what you're going to do. That's right. the thing. We know what you're going to do. You're not going to be fair. I saw, again, going back to the article in Washington Post, that was not a fair statement. No, you didn't compare the two. You just went after her. Right. You should have done that in your editorial. You were wrong. And the thing about it is they're not, people are not listening to the media. Media had a whole big thing with, with, with um, Clinton. Because the, the emails, oh, yeah, by the way, when is the media now have all these emails from the, the Trump campaign? They want to do the ethical thing and not release them. They were right. fucking dropping um, Hillary Clinton emails every fucking day yeah, on know. that hack. So don't, don't, don't stop it. 
you guys well, need to stop it. Kamala, Kamala, and 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 Tim Walls have something that the media can't control, <laughs> and I think it's probably one of the most important things in life. Anytime you're doing something, whether you're a sports team or a politician, and that is momentum. You yeah. can't stop the momentum. Once it starts rolling, it just gains speed. And that's what's happening with Kamala and Tim Walls. The convention is going to help them gain speed. The debate's going to help them gain speed. And they've only got, you know, two and a half months to get to. It's not going yeah, to be and, a problem maintaining this momentum. And what, I mean, what do they have? They have nothing. See, the thing about it is that they have no way to twist anything she says into a bad thing. No. Uh, same thing with Vice President, with um, Governor Walls. And here's, I mean, and the other thing is, and we, I wanted to address this because I just saw my notes. There's a special place in hell for James Comer. Oh, a Jesus Christ. A very special yeah. place in James Comer. Okay. I saw that the other day and I read it. Okay. One. Well, tell them what you read. Tell them what you yeah, read. read. So James Comer is about to open hearings, do an investigation on Governor Walsh for his connections with China. Now, he's using the word CCP, which I understand goes back to the old Cold War where the Soviet Union used, used the four, three C's and the P because he was um, teacher's exchange in the <laughs> 90s. Yeah. He, he taught uh, in China. He taught um, English in China. And then when he came back to America, he took some student groups to China as kind of a, a, a class trip. Uh, right. I think he had his honeymoon in China. Uh, but 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 at the same time, when he was in Congress, he was also going against mm -hmm. China regarding uh, human trafficking. Uh, the whole thing is ridiculous. I mean, James Comer investigated Hunter Biden, uh, mm -hmm. Joe Biden, uh, Letitia James, Elvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis, and not one shred of evidence for any of them has ever happened. When well, do you get embarrassed and stop the shit? Well, here's the thing. And, and the House Oversight Committee is designed for federal, right? if I'm correct. It's the House Oversight for the House and some other things that are going on in there. When do you investigate a sitting governor? Right. You can't do that. Same thing. You can't investigate a prosecutor in a different state you can't do that you have no reach to do that well and does it's, it well you have no reach over a a, a state district attorney either it, or, or anything like that the, the, you know we hear donald trump say this all the time given the circumstances and given what they're trying to do does that not smell of election interference but it, it's weaponizing of government yeah. what, what james comer said it's period and the thing about it you can't you can't reach out. Basically, what he's what they're trying to do is saying that in his chairmanship, he can investigate anyone in the country from his point. You're a legislative branch. You're not the executive branch. You do not prosecute. You do not investigate. No. The, the DOJ, the FBI under the DOJ is executive branch designed for investigation and prosecution. He's trying to come up with dirt on Tim Walls, which there is none. He's trying to come up with to help Donald Trump in his election efforts. That's but fucking it's, election interference. But it is how what it is it going to help by looking ridiculous? I mean, um, I know that Governor Walls is going to say, no, I got other things to do. You go, go, go play. And you really want to get Jamie Raskin and, and Jasmine Crockett running on this again yeah. in a hearing? Good yeah. luck with that, motherfucker. Well, they... they they get embarrassed every time, and that's always been my question. What do they have a have a, a humiliation kink or something? Because they keep doing it, and they keep they, getting humiliated. They think it's going to help. It's going to help anyone. There's no one to help on this. You well, can't, it's a joke. Nobody's paying attention. Well, to I, it. I know we're not. Well, we're laughing at it. Yeah. I mean, it's you're all looking at going because I read that. I'm going. What? Why? You you're a legislative branch. You you cannot investigate or prosecute anything outside of that. If you have a concern, you take it to the DOJ and let the DOJ handle it. There's no concerns. We know that. Everyone knows that. This well, what just, happened? What happened to impeaching Biden too? Why don't you put that on the table? Oh, we there's haven't still. Seen that. Oh, the, there's a there was a side note in that article that they are going to he's going to open another investigation on President Biden and Harris for supporting anti Second Amendment groups. 
I'm not kidding. Better that fucking hurry. You got 78 order. days, man. I, I mean, that was in there. And I'm like, what? I mean, it's just, that's the thing about it. What we're hearing right now, and I don't give a fuck what the pundits say. I've been waiting for the other shoe to drop. There's no other shoe to drop. Right. There's nothing. There's nothing to say. I don't give a fuck what they say. They're waiting for it or the honey was. No, this is already latched on. And she came out with an economic program. And the only thing you got is nothing because the other guy has nothing. He hired Corey Lewandowski, uh, whatever, Corey Lewandowski. Lewandowski. Yeah. Didn't he just plead uh, out on abusing, uh, sexually abusing a, a donor? Yeah. Okay, so this is the head of your ticket again. I mean, it's <laughs> Colin Carhead, Car, Cowherd made a good comment about Trump. He just did a whole rant on him, and he said he's a convicted felon. So is this, um, so it's like half the people around him, yeah. his lawyers, his campaign people, his people who you know flush his toilets, they're all felons, they're around him. It's like like calls to like. And the hardest thing right now for me through this whole thing is like to watch the media count to cater to him, give him his time, not ask him hard questions, not get him in an interview. The hardest interview he had was uh, with the um June, uh, with the um black journalist convention and he yeah. ran like a little scared bitch from it yeah. Yeah, he they, did. because they pressed him she wouldn't let go with his bullshit i got some news from james comer by the way mm -hmm. james comer as of january 3rd he's not going to be the chairman of any fucking committee no i hope he can get defeated in kentucky i, mean, I don't care just... if he gets defeated but the the democrats will take control and he won't be a chairman oh no god he's not and it's like i can't wait for all for I mean, Congress, they're going to, it, it again, other reports, they're going to have, the government's going to end at the end of September. Yeah. It's happening. You can't stop it. Um, the mega idiots in there want this thing about we have to guarantee that no illegals um, people can vote. It's got to be some weird program that the Senate's not going to buy into. And Mike Johnson, for all his um, God, you know, his his Christianity knows that he's fucked if they close the government. If the government goes down, they're fucked. It's yeah, over. they are. Well, it's you know, every time, every time they were going to come close to closing the government down, people came to me, oh, my God, what's going to happen? And every time, three times, I think, in the past year, I said, look. They're going to walk it up to the last minute of the last day. Then they will cave because the Republicans are the only ones going to lose if the government is shut down. It's but going to happen the, the same way. But my concern when we get to that point near the end of September, if you see that there is no way to stop this, because once we get to that point, a couple of things are already going to happen because that's the end of September, if I'm correct. A couple so, things are already yeah. going to happen. Um, we're going to have the DNC. There's the bump. There's going to come the debate. You know how that's going to go. Right. And counting on what Judge Marshawn does, and I know he's not going to do what he thinks he does, there's a sentencing. Right. He's going to deal with that. You're going to get to the point at the end of September that a lot of these Republicans are going to say, you know what? If I'm going to go down, I'm taking everybody with me. That's a good and, point. Do you think they, they look at it and say, hey, we're losing anyway. Let's burn the motherfucker down. Look at them. They consider yeah. that the reason they want to shut the government down because the government doesn't do anything. Of course, it doesn't do anything because you guys don't fucking do anything. Right. But but if you're at the point you got nothing to lose, fuck it, burn it down. We're gonna lose anyway, and let the Democrats pick up the pieces. That's a possibility. I mean, in it's a good possibility because look look at the look at the point people. I mean, Lauren Lauren Boebert calling Kamala Harris dumb. I mean, God Donald almighty, Trump calling her dumb. Jesus dumb. Christ. I mean. And then, oh, the Nancy Mace, Mance, Mace thing. Did you see that? Nancy yeah. Mace. That was like, look, aside from the from the blatant fucking racism, yeah, lady, you're a racist. You said a racist thing. Remind us what we, what she said. Yeah, so she basically won't. 
let's all let's put one thing in context, everybody. The vice president of the United States is Kamala Harris. Uh, right. Kam- Kamala Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. She is the vice president of the United States. She is due the respect of the office. Right. I would never get the best line. The, one of the best scenes in Bo- Band of Brothers was that one officer who they forced out in the beginning. And then the, the other officer became a major. He saw him and walked past him and refused to salute him. And he said, Captain, look at me. And he said, you may not like the man, but you salute the offense. You salute right. the rank. You right. give respect. So he forced him to salute. You may not like the woman, but you have to give respect to the office. Right. And for her saying, I will call her what I want. It, it's not even the racist tint of it. That was the thing that CNN missed. Yeah. It was racist. We knew she was racist to begin with because you already questioned her her race, period. No, it's the lack of respect for the vice president of the United States. Even yeah. at the time when when Trump was president, I didn't like the guy, but I, 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 well, I'm afraid I despise him. But I respect he is the off, he is the president of the United States. You have to respect the office. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't, but we do. Yeah. And the point was, that's where Republicans are. They don't respect anything that we respect it, respect in this country. They don't like America. They hate our country. It's always America's this, America's that. It's a shithole, this, that. Nothing good do they say about America or Americans. Right. They root against Olympians. They 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 make it. They don't respect the flag because they put Trump's name or face on it. They don't respect our institutions because they think elections are made to be to made to be um, coerced into what you want, not free and fair. Right. Again, as we discussed earlier, a candidate for the uh, Republican candidate for the president of the United States disparaged. Congressional Medal of Honor, um, people won the award, and Republicans don't say a goddamn thing. No, they don't. Silence. They would if a Democrat said it, but they don't say it. Oh, they would. They'll lose their fucking mind. On TikTok, I made a prediction based on knowing the behavior of Donald Trump and any other narcissist. Now, when Kamala Harris came out and said she's going to do a uh, talk on the economy, what did mm-hmm. Donald Trump do? The first thing he did is he set up a press conference where he was going to talk about the economy on Thursday so he could try to undercut her or whatever. Of course, he went and did it, and he failed miserably, and he made himself look like a fool. Here's what I'm contending right now. We've got the Democratic National Convention going on now. It's going to be a big deal for the Democrats. They're going to get a lot of hay made during this time. To me, knowing a narcissist, knowing Donald Trump, tells me that something starting today through the Democratic National Convention, Donald Trump's going to do something fucking goofy, something crazy, something loud with the intention of pulling the attention away from the DNC. What do you think? Well, there's a scary thought, but that would track. I mean, what could he do that would Uh, be, I mean. Another press conference? (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, but that, and the sad thing about it is that they'll go running toward it. Yeah. Um, that's the sad thing with the media. I mean, short of literally getting about um, getting up on a stage and screaming the N word, I don't know what else that he can do that could debase it any further. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, what what do you got left other short of short of calling his supporters to the DNC to cause violence? But Which, they are they aren't showing up anyway. They didn't show up to his conviction or his indictments. They're they're afraid to show up because the deep state's gonna put them in jail. So they're 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 gutless, they're cowards, they're not gonna show up in, in mass at the Capitol or I mean, in Chicago. He, I mean, I I mean the only announcement I'm thinking and that he might do during the DNC is basically um you know, basically uh, shove um uh, JD Vance down a set of flight of stairs. Yeah. And then and cut him loose and then bring in, you know, little Marco or something like that as his VP. Um, that's the only thing I can think would be the big announcement he would do. You know what I get a kick out of? For as bad as JD Vance is, 
a guy with 34 felony convictions, been found liable of of uh, uh, of sexual abuse, stealing documents, inciting a riot and a possible coup on the Capitol. He thinks J.D. Vance is what's dragging him down. Fuck. No, I mean, Johnny, it's you. It's you that's dragging you down. I mean, he has ankle weights He um, with a chain. He just attached another weight to the middle of the chain. Yeah. So it, to an extent, it is not helping him. And J.D. Vance is, I've never seen such a phony human being on the face of the planet. Yeah, it's absolutely I mean, I mean, pitiful. He's, he's not pitiful. I just don't know what to call that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not even... I thought first you could call him a bully or something like that, but no, he's too he's, he's wimpy. Not, he's too he's not big even, a puss to be a bully. He's, he's not even that, and he's not intellectual sounding, so he can bullshit his way through anything. Yeah. Um, he just sits there and just spouts off stuff. I think he thinks he's funny. Oh, I think he does. He thinks he's funny, and no one else thinks he's funny. And the one thing that just hit me with. And and I, I thought about this the other day about Donald Trump. What is it about him that bugs me or what I think is his problem is? Um, have you ever seen a, a, a movie called Defending Your Life no. uh, with Albert Brooks? It's a great film. It's about the afterlife. Okay. That you have to you you die and then you get judged and either you move on to the next afterlife or you go back to Earth to learn your lesson or you don't earn your way through. Right. So he's being judged. So all these places, you know, in this judgment city, there's restaurants and uh, comedy clubs. And he goes to a comedy club and there's this old like Borscht comedian out there and he is dying. Right. And, you know, it, in, in, in Albert Brooks is down there. And, you know, if you know Albert Brooks, he's you know kind of a heckler. Yeah. The guy goes, I'm dying out here. He goes, we're already dead. You're killing us again. I mean. But I heard the tone of that guy. Uh, it, it hit me. I was listening to Trump's speech, and he was trying to be funny. And I'm going, fuck. Donald Trump is a worn-out old I, Borsch comedian. Borsch Bell comedian, yeah. Well, Borsch yeah, Bell from the 50s. I, I think that's one thing that people misunderstand. First of all, I think J.D. Vance is socially awkward. He's just, he's in a place that he doesn't feel comfortable and he's trying to fit in and it's not working. He's not funny. He's not clever. He's already got so much against him. He can't do anything. But that's the one thing about Donald Trump I've always known. And I don't know that people realize because they take him at his word for everything and he can't because he's a liar, but he's doing shtick up there. You know, yes. when he says some of the things he's doing, he's saying it because he thinks it's funny. He doesn't realize that people take it seriously and that that it makes him look bad. He's trying to be funny. And the platform he has is not appropriate for the stick he's using. And they're not funny. No, it's, it's not, not funny. funny. It's not funny. It's not. It's it's funny when everybody around you is paid to laugh at you. But right. when it's used anymore. The thing about it, let's, let's talk about sales because one – Someone was was saying that he's a salesman, a used car salesman. Not a good salesman. Let me be honest. He would never sell anything. No. People would hate it because let me because he's selling like it was in the fifties and the sixties. Let me give you guys all a sales lesson right now. Okay. We do not. I do not sell to a, the product to the client. No. I find what the need is for the client, and sell them the 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 solution to the need. And because then it becomes a collaborator thing because you're going to give me money for a service. Right. But you got to make sure the service is what you need. So my job is to convince you that at our price, what we can do for you is valuable. And yeah, to an extent, I'm going to win your trust to enough to you give me your money over a phone. Right. So that's a good salesperson. And you don't, and you make sure that you tell them this is what you're going to get at the end. This is how it benefits you. Thank you very much. You're not going to be, you're going to enjoy what we just did for you because you and I did it together. Well, part That's of part what of part sales is when, when I, when I was selling uh, over the years, I, 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 one thing I learned, the first thing I do when I meet somebody, I don't sell them anything. I make a friend. 
I, I, I get some kind of rapport. I get them to like me and then hopefully mm -hmm. trust you. And then when it comes to selling, it's their guy getting them a deal. So right. it's about relationships and it's about getting people to like you. And Donald Trump just does not have that in him. <laughs> they have to be paid to like him. That's always been the case. And people don't like him. And J.D. Vance, he's unlikable. He's like Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is you're not, to an extent, as a politician, you're not only selling what you're representing and what you believe, you're selling yourself. Because you, because probably you're, more than policy. Yeah, more than policy. Because again, as like all the Trump folks would like to say, we're not a democracy, we're a representative, whatever, whatever they call it, um, a, a republic, representative republic. Yes, we're a representative republic. I'm choosing someone with my vote that's going to speak on my behalf in the, in the, in the position of power. I'm trusting you with that. You got to convince me that that trust is warranted, that you're not going to, that you believe right. what, that you're going to give me what, not give me what I need, but represent me properly and represent the area around me properly. That's what my vote is. Well, you know, um, the thing about it is when we look at Tim Walls and Kamala Harris, uh, the point you're making about, you know, people liking you, Tim Walls doesn't have to spew any policy. People just love this guy. He's a big teddy bear. They love him. Same with Kamala. She represents somebody that's tough, that's going to fight for them, but right. also is warm and dances and laughs. People like her. And that's, you know, when it comes down to it, people think we're trying to fix the world with this election. We only have one job win the fucking election if and then after we win the election we decide how to fix things but that's the first step to, to make into getting rid of the disease that is trump and trump right cut it out first and the one thing i was going to ask you because again i knew very little about tim walls other than when i saw that picture and i was impressed he he's been governor for how long um i think when he did win the election i i, I think he uh He's in Is his he second, second term. Or second first term? Ter I think he's in second term, six years. He's got two more years in this term. Okay. What was this? Uh, what was his election like? I mean, was it close? Did he pound the guy? You know, honestly, um, I don't remember. Um, no, I don't think he pounded the guy. I mean, everything he did when when he went into Congress, for example, he went into a Congress with 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 a, uh, a mainstay. Uh, Republican area, a mainstay mm -hmm. Republican candidate. The guy had been there for years and he beat him. And it was okay. just amazing how he was able to do that. He's just that kind of guy. Uh, when he came in and became pres or governor, <laughs> I'd never heard of him. I didn't know anything okay. about him. Because you had a Republican governor, right? Previous? No, he was, was Democrat, a Mark Dayton. Mark Dayton, okay. So he so basically you went from Democrat to Democrat. You didn't have any kind of Republican no. stench in Minnesota, we, not like Wisconsin. No, we have we have some Republican governors over the years. We had a guy named Tim Pawlenty who was basically Donald Trump before Donald Trump became president, and he was a. Why is that name familiar? Well, he well because because Donald Trump at one time talked about making him vice president, and then hung him out to dry, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> is that bad? Okay, good. Yeah, he's a um, piece of shit. Well, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, that's the land of Hubert Humphrey. And yeah. even as a kid, I, I admired Humphrey. I thought he was a good man, just kind of got screwed over by the Democratic Party, personally. That's my opinion. I think generally yeah, he was a decent guy. I, the one thing I will say about Hubert Humphrey, um, I have kind of a connection. My 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 uh, uh, my grandfather, he lived in Circle Pines, which is a suburb or kind of an outlying area from cities, and he was – the mayor or on the city council and stuff. And, and on a number of occasions, whether it was when he was mayor of Minneapolis or when he was a congressman or whatever, uh, Hubert Humphrey would come to my, uh, my grandfather's house and get cool. in these meetings and stuff. It was kind of cool. And my grandfather, who I trust implicitly and I have a lot of respect for. Mm -hmm. And if I, grew up any like anybody i would hope i grew up like him said he was a decent guy i mean he was a politician but he was a decent guy and i don't know if you remember when he was senator he died in, in senate and you know who the governor appointed to replace him no i don't remember that part his wife muriel yes now i remember yeah and muriel, muriel was beloved in this state too so yeah everybody loved hubert humphrey 
Yeah, so I mean, that's the thing that's so weird. We're going back to selling yourself. But the only thing is that you can you can sell yourself, but if you don't seem competent, I my my supervisors made a couple of comments. That the one thing that I want to be is competent, sound competent to my client. Absolutely. When they ask me a question, they got to know that I know my shit, especially what I do for a living is a little complex. Yeah. And they, I get into explain it to the point that, and even explain it to the point that, yeah, this isn't going to work for you because this is going to happen to you to be upfront with them. Now, I've had those discussions with people. Um, and the one thing you can see with Harris and you can see with Wallace is the competency and who they are. Right. You don't get to these points without being competent. The biggest, again, Trump is not competent. He's just fucking lucky. I have yeah. never met a man. He is literally, everyone's a fan of the Simpsons. I was for a while. And then I started to look at Homer Simpson and all that. And people may not like this opinions, but fuck you. Um, is Homer Simpson is an asshole who's lucky. Yeah. He's a total incompetent fuck. But he gets lucky. Right. And a lot of people pay for it. And a lot of people think it's cute. Yeah. And I one time I disconnected from the jokes and listened to who he is. And I thought, and another another show I despise at this point. Again, you don't if you don't like my opinion, fuck you. It's always sunny in, in Philadelphia. Yeah. All those people are MAGA fucks. Yeah. I'm sorry. They are <laughs> no different than what you see at a MAGA rally. It's true. My 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 kids look that show, they laugh, but I listen to it and and I just get I go, what the fuck? Because it's real. And so Donald Trump, to me, is Homer Simpson to an extent. And a, du just, a dumber oh, Homer Simpson. Dumber dumb. Homer Simpson and a dangerous Homer Simpson well, you know, with a mean streak. Yeah, I, under, I understand, uh, you know, it, when it comes to sales or trying to sell somebody something. I mean, while I'm retired, Mm -hmm. The idea of some old white guy sitting in his living room doing TikToks and doing a podcast and talking about politics, it doesn't work unless people resonate Buy with into you, it. Yeah. like mm -hmm. you or feel like you're being, because there's many people doing that on TikTok and it just doesn't click. And it doesn't click because they don't have the, uh, they aren't genuine. They aren't necessarily smart. And I'm not saying I'm super smart or super uh, charismatic. It's just that you, you got to be true to yourself. You got to not be putting on a show and you just got to, got to, got to do what you can to tell the truth. Uh, that's the, that's the core of sales. If you can or, do or yourself get, and tell yeah, the just, truth, you're good. Yeah, you're good. And I mean, going back to the TikTok thing, I mean, I do it because I get pissy Yeah. and it's my release and I'm fine with it. Do I have a lot? No, but I mean, once in a while, someone, you know, I do, uh, someone says something like one person asked me when we were going to be doing this again. And yeah. they said, yeah, great. And I told them, that's good. That's great. Because the thing about it is like, even as a kid, I always had opinions of shit. I always, I just drive my mom in because I would, and it's weird to be a teenager talking politics in yeah. the 70s. Trust me. It was a bizarre yeah. world. Yeah, I can imagine. But what I, I think the biggest problem we have with a lot of Americans, they're just, for for the longest time, we've been just this disc acted we have and and we let this thing crawl up in us and also i then there's um i think um we have to remember one thing i'm uh, going back to brian tyler cohen he's written a book called shameless it's a good book and i gotta get it i'm gonna get it next paycheck about the 40 year 40 year plan of republicans and how they twisted america an american right. dream going back to Reagan, going to Mitch McConnell, going with what their plans are. Because understand, people talk about, you know, people say like now with Republicans, they'll be racist in the open. No, they were racist in the open before. They just knew how to uh, how to coach it. Right. And and you could, and when you called it out, like the Willie Horton thing, 
right. or or the welfare moms, or when you call out their, their what they do, they all act, oh no, that's not what I meant. We know what you <laughs> meant, but everyone else covered for them. And right. so that's why we got to this point where they're out in the open. Let's let's because the biggest thing, the biggest plan was the Supreme Court. Right. It took him three decades. Right. That took him, yeah, 30 years to get what they want. So if you look at the Supreme Court now, they feel like they run the country now. Listen to them. Oh, Watch they do. them. Um, John Roberts, uh, not John Roberts, um, Neil Gorsuch, after the president laid out, hey, we need these reforms and everyone's popular. Oh, you better be careful what you do. You just threaten the president of the United States. You would not do that unless you think you could get away with it. Right. Well, well, watch watch how the attitudes change after the election. Once they know the Democrats will be in control and that Kamala will be the president, they're going to start backing down a lot. But that shouldn't stop the Democrats from doing what we yeah, need. And my, yeah, and my biggest concern, because the House will be younger. The House yeah. has a lot of has a lot of dogs in it. Yeah. And I mean, that in a good in a good way, you know. Going to a sport thing, there's a lot of dogs and they're ready to go. Yeah. The Senate is where a lot of the stuff that has to be done with the Supreme Court is still mired in a lot of old time guys who don't want to rattle a cage. I don't want that. I mean, honestly, after the November 6th and we get everything after January 20, 20th, 5th, January 20th, on the on the 21st, I want to start talking about. We need to look at each uh, look and start taking down names and kicking ass. Yeah. I do not give a fuck about the political ramifications. What more? What's more worse than we have right now? Starting with the leadership in the Senate, and the first thing out of the Senate is that we don't get, we don't want to get rid of the filibuster, then we're fucked. Yeah, I agree. Because it's, that's got to be done. Got to be done, and I don't trust Chuck Schumer. I don't trust the old guard because they're stuck as the old guard. We need to get that flushed, and we need all those people who kind of turn on Joe Biden. Retribution is coming. I I, were all- I agree. Even though it's people I like, mm-hmm. there's no excuse for that. And I mean, any, I'm, any I'm, of you heard that Joe's kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, given the cold shoulder to Nancy Pelosi, which yes. she deserves. She deserves. Now, it's he'll maybe years later, or if there's years later for either of them, maybe bear the hatchet. But he feels. He feels betrayed. He feels betrayed. And also, I still think to this day, I don't give if someone will, will probably say, I think he did this and figured out a way to fuck them all because they really wanted, didn't want Kamala Harris. Oh, they no. can say they did. But I'm sorry, there was a lot of time from um, from the time that he made that announcement to when Harris to they uh, went behind Harris, because I'm telling you, they had their the typical Democratic mini primary crazy bullshit plan to go. And then Joe Biden stepped on it and, and turned it into something bigger where he will go down. As not only the great president but a great American. Right. What and, he did. And, and probably save the country. And, and, and then, and then people will go the great American who was, <laughs> who was, uh, who was somewhat betrayed by, and the names will come out and they're going to be like the uh, Aaron Burr of history. Right. And those points. And like Nancy Pelosi, look, you're old. I wish you weren't running your seat. You see, do what you're going to do. You'll win it anyway. I still have, I have my doubts that Hakeem Jeffries should be speaker of the house. I worry about that. I like Hakeem Jeffries, but I don't like how he handled this situation. No, and and the thing is, you 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 got you, you got to know what you're doing, and you can't take risks like that. Hakeem Jeffries needs to redeem himself somehow. I like yeah. Hakeem Jeffries. I think he's strong, but if I can't trust you to back the president, I got to question you. Yeah, and I think there's a and the also the. The primary got rid of a lot of the really f- – the one thing I'm, I'm going to say this, people don't like AOC. I've always liked AOC. I, thought oh, she, I like she, her. She's a, she's a smart – but what she's done 
she's toned herself back. She's matured yeah. in her in her yeah. position because she understood that in order to continue what she wants to do and to get what she wants, she can't be like the rest of the so-called squad, which right. lost three others of them, except for uh, Ilian, which she couldn't win that day. It was going to be hard to remove from that district. Right. The other ones went down. Why did they went down? Because <coughs> they did not adjust. She adjusted. I'm listening to her now, and it's more metered. It's right. more um, to a point. It's more we're going to do this together type of thing. And I think she's going to pop up in a leadership role that um, big that we're, that she's moving towards. She saw the bigger picture. Yeah. I think right now, if she was maybe not the speaker, but house whip, yeah, um, that would be a good thing. I don't think it'd be a bad thing because I think she's down with a lot of what uh, Harris wants to do. As for the Senate, I have no idea who's young in there. Um, Fetterman couldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole. Maybe the guy from Connecticut, um, Chris, um, uh, the Connecticut. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, the Connecticut senator, because I'm telling you, if Chuck Schumer is is uh, majority leader again, I, I that's going to be a rough road. Unless they have 60 senators, it's going to be rough. Yeah, it, it is. Do. You know, I think in the uh, in the House, you know, I'd like to give Hakeem Jeffries the benefit of the doubt. He's a sharp guy. He's a smart guy. He's a strong guy. I think he would be a fine uh, speaker of the House. But if not him, there are other people that could be speaker of the House. There could be Jamie Raskin. There mm -hmm. could be a Mark or, or Eric Swalwell mm -hmm. or any number of people in the House. That's what we've always said. We've got a deep yeah. bench. There's a lot of powerful people, powerful speakers that could fit that role if Hakeem Jeffries – and, they decide he's not the guy. And and the Jeffries, the problem with Jeffries, he is a he was chosen by Pelosi. He has a Pelosi accolade. Um, that's part of it. So we're going to see. It's kind of weird now we're discussing that after the election, you know, Democrats cleaning the house. Yeah. In, in a blue Congress, and I never thought we would get there again. I think we're going to get there. We have to. Let me rephrase that. We have to get there. Yeah. There is no. If we do this fight and Kamala Harris wins the presidency, but the House is barely blue or the or the Republicans have taken back the Senate, then we're back to square one. Because let me make it clear, Republicans will do what Republicans always do because they don't give a fuck about the country and discussion. You know, I was talking to, just, I was talking to Eric about this. People were saying, well, the Senate could be tight. And, you know, historically speaking, based on what's going on and who's up for a reelection, yeah, that could be true. But as I've said all along, I think the single biggest issue is Roe v. Wade and uh, mm -hmm. the abortion thing. Uh, and it's not just Donald Trump that's going to pay the price for true. that Roe v. Wade thing. There are going to be senators in this country. I mean, like, for example, if you're in Florida and you want abortion in the state and you're going to vote for Donald Trump, are you really going to still vote for Rick Scott? I doubt it. Well, first of all, Rick Scott looks like the epitome of death. Yeah, the only thing missing is the, is the robes and the scathe. Right. Um, and he's been a fucking crook for years. I don't know why they put him in there. Rick Scott's in trouble. And I've been, yeah. I've been seeing that he's in a lot of trouble. Another person that they're making sounds that he's in trouble is Josh Hawley in Missouri. Yeah, he is. There is there is rumblings it, because they got that on the on the ballot and he's being a total asshole. Yeah, he's panicking. The only, he's panicking. The only problem is there's a third party, strong third party guy in Missouri that could fuck this up. Um, but Hawley is not looking good because he's total Christian nationalist. He's bought into all that bullshit. We're going to talk, I mean, the raised fist, they're going after him. And from what I can see, um, like in, and when he was uh, at a, a one state fair, people were not happy to hear him. No, no. They were not happy to listen to his ass. There's one other um, consideration he, about the, about the, about Congress though, that we are considering. It's after the election. If, in fact, there are superseding indictments and sitting members of Congress get indicted, 
that could change the complexion of a lot of shit oh, too. God, yes. And I and I hope the first thing again going back to on noon on the um on after the inauguration or that day of uh, uh, the 20th at 12 p.m. at 12:30 I want President Harris to go to uh, to Mayor Garland and Christopher Ray. I want your resignations on my desk within the hour. Absolutely. You know, those two men, especially Christopher Ray, have to go. And then I want the dust Justice Department to become the Justice Department again, because we have to finish what Jack Smith started. Right. Or Mayor Garland would luckily start it and go after this because we cannot let them get away what happened on January 6th. And there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of angry people if there isn't accountability. Even when they, Kamala wins, they're still going to expect the accountability, or there's going to be an uprising or an upheaval uh, okay. from people who watch these clowns get away with doing whatever they want. Yeah, and that's those are the two things that has to be because we uh, Mayor Garner cannot sit there. Christopher Ray needs to be removed. Should have been removed a long time ago, but Joe Biden didn't want to. I don't know, whatever, rock the boat. Um, we need to rock the boat. We need, we need to, to rock the boat. I, I think if you get the mandate, you roll with the mandate. You don't worry about feelings. That's the thing. Democrats will have to get over this now. And I think we're starting to with the younger version. Yeah. If we get them, if you get the mandate, you're blue, total blue in the House, total blue in the Senate. You take the mandate and fuck everyone else's feelings. Yep, you I agree. You finish the job because if you do not finish the job, this has all been useless. You don't and cut you out all the cancer; everyone. you can get it back. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking well, at the clock. I think you need to go to bed. I need to go to bed. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, you're an hour ahead. I'll be right where you are tomorrow or I enjoy Sunday. And uh, I thank you, Will, for coming on and 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 saying your piece. It's always interesting to hear your point of view. Um, and I appreciate you coming on. You'll be back. Yeah, I'm more than likely. Probably we'll see how the DNC rolls and when you get back from Savannah. Enjoy the coast. Um, it'll be another wonderful August in Georgia. Enjoy the humidity. So I got to yeah, say. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, for those of you listening, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. Hope you have a great day and we'll talk. Oh, to by you the way, yeah. if you find me on TikTok, yeah. Binder 38 US, give me a follow. But um, you guys take care. And remember, keep the faith, y'all. That's where we're at. Check out Will on TikTok. Binder 38. U.S. U.S. Binder 38 U.S. Check him out on TikTok by all means. I watch his shit. You should watch his shit. And uh, keep watching my shit, too. What the hell? Yeah. Anyway. Hell? Let's keep doing it. Keep doing it. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, hope you have a great day. We will talk to you again tomorrow.